Hello, what's poppin'? We are on kick, K-I-C-K dot com. We are live. Well, by the time you see this, you probably won't, you know, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Yeah, get me. Uh, right here. If there's any uh, highlights from the live, they'll be on this channel. This channel's actually growing because I've been posting some stuff. That's cool. Uh, also, we got merch. Got it on me right now. Ordered me another shirt last night while I was doing other people's orders, completing other people's orders. I was doing, yeah, I was like, let me get one too. Another one. You know what I'm saying? And then, um, don't forget, we do got Patreon as well, man. That's where we post things that that don't make it to YouTube, or we can't post on YouTube. And don't forget the Discord as well. This is London's Bleeding. It's a documentary. I don't believe I've seen this. But we're going to find out, man. Let's get into this, man. These are stories over a three-month period from the front line of the epidemic of knife crime in Britain. They just stepped in. My brain was telling me. Your brain was telling you that you were nearing like you are nearing death. We're just killing each other and it's pointless. It's still early. The guys aren't even tipping out of the pubs yet. Absolutely anything could happen tomorrow. Let's face it, it doesn't take much to get stabbed in our society today. Stay with you. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, the cinematography in this looks absolutely stunning. <laughs> uh, BBC should go back to this. We don't want to hear no more interviews. Just just go back to this type of stuff. Give us all documentaries that I can react to. That'd be great. On any given day in Britain, a knife attack will intrude on a young life the youngest to die so far this year, just 14. How best to give our youth a chance, we've been trying to find out with the help of one of the busiest trauma centers in I'm the world. It's, um, what, just after one in the morning. Uh, we've been here now for five days and uh, there have been seven in all stabbing victims admitted to the Royal London. Um, so at least one a day and um, What's really sad is that the staff say it's been a slow week. I was literally, I was about to say that. That sounds like that's good that it's a slow week. You know what I'm saying? Nobody wants to go endure that. But like, I, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like people don't really get the like. I get it. This is London. It's a lot smaller than the Chicago. But like, people don't really get the severity of what be going on in Chicago. They said seven in five days. In a month in Chicago, there's like 300. <laughs> there's, there's, they, it, I, let me, I, am I, no, 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 I'm, I'm reaching. In a month, there's probably like, nah, I'm not reaching. I feel like I'm not reaching. Like gunshot wounds entering a Chicago hospital, there gotta be like, it's gotta be cut, touching two, three hundred. Yeah, because cause, cause unalivings is touching a thousand, eight hundred, seven hundred, a thousand. You know what I'm saying? So. Like, what was the last holiday? Fourth of July? I didn't hear nothing, but like Memorial Day, like it was like <laughs> like 70. Wasn't it like 70 gunshot wounds on, on Memorial I, I might be exaggerating, but like, it was up there. Maybe not 70, like 20. This is 16 year old Lucas. At approximately 16.30, uh, he's been allegedly assaulted by a group of people and sustained a single uh, incision wound to the left upper quadrant. Lucas Perry has been stabbed in the chest. Hey. One of two knife. Oh, no, yeah. That's a crazy name, my boy. 
Salute, though. I was about to say it, but then I read it. That's my 200th follower, though. Salute to you. Tim's admitted to the Royal London Hospital this evening. His painkillers haven't kicked in. Okay, chest x-ray, complete the primary with a D. Consultant Martin Griffiths will soon operate on Lucas. He's stabilized, but nothing certain. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm right here. Open your eyes. Oh, definitely. Sound like he got a collapsed lung. Look at me. Take my hand. What's your name? How old are you? 16. And what happened to you? I would have, yo, doc, get me to the operating room. I don't want to talk. <laughs> the attacker's knife pierced his liver and punctured his stomach. After Lucas refused to hand over his bike and phone to a group of teen robbers. Got a phone call. Not my son. If you're getting robbed at any type of gunpoint, knife point, give it up. It's not, it's not, you're not a B-I-T-C-H if you give it up, man. You just value your life. Simple as that. Give it up. I've been stabbed. I just can't believe. I just, it's absolutely awful. I just got to open him up and see where the knife's gone, what it's hit, um, and take it from there, really. There's lots of things that could go wrong. Lucas was randomly assaulted, but a rising number of victims are being specifically targeted by people who know what they're doing. We know we're seeing a lot more, about 10% rise year on year. And we get the feeling that we're seeing more complex wounds in, in areas with bits joined together, junction layers like the neck and the groin, and that suggests that there's a movement towards more severe wounds, more numbers of wounds, so individual people get more wounds in more dangerous areas that require the expertise of our, of our service. I definitely ain't seen this. What's going on then? What's going on out there? I hope it's just a blip. I worry that there's a change in attitude towards knife injury, that people are becoming better educated on how to cause more damage. That ain't it. It ain't no blip. It's just people just becoming more savage. People turning their savage up, unfortunately. I don't condone that, you two. I'm just saying, I'm just giving you the reality of what it is. Those often first on the scene, the paramedics have noticed the trend too. In the last year or two years, we've seen more uh, an increase in the severity yes, yes, yeah, of the before and the frequency as well. It's a 17 year old slashed seven, eight times in the buttocks, lower back, really deep wounds. Um, Martin is very, very worried because this man has lost a lot of blood. It's going to be touch and go. Another victim comes in. Damn, boy, I'm telling you, I would hate to get stabbed. Stabbed in a targeted strike several times. One patient who didn't want us to show his face had been cut around the buttocks and the surgeon who treated him speculated his attackers were hoping to permanently damage his anus. For they was trying to get that man a Glasgow send off? That's crazy. Sing him to use a colostomy bag. One example of the- You see what I'm saying? You see what type of person this is? Like. You see what type of person yields a knife? Like, they were aiming to do that. You see where your mindset is? Look at this. This is wild. Twisted nature of the story of knife crime. A veteran of all the violence, Martin Griffiths has now been appointed the National Health Service's Violent Crime Reduction Chief for London to educate wider society on the causes of knife crime to find solutions. Let's strip away. Convention, shall we? Let's strip away what we, we expect to happen in our lives. Let's strip away um, <clears throat> resource, shelter, warmth, comfort, parenting, structure. Let's reintroduce chaotic parenting, inconsistent food, inconsistent shelter, no aspiration rather than no aspiration, and, and a group or society around you in which that behavior is the norm. Hey. Yeah, I ain't even gonna try to get this one. I know this one getting. <clears throat> and put around that a big fence of which people are judging you from and deeming you as being worthless. And let's give you no access to get out of that place. And let's see how you behave. What will happen? It's gonna be Flash. explosive. It might be positive. I got 
got stabbed in my arm seven times and my trigger finger still works. When life couldn't get much worse, I was in a bus with a nurse and I still flirt. Me, if my work it will work, let me show you back real work. Grant ain't never been a mum, Grant ain't never been sure. If I had a car, I would... That's L R, yo. Doing a road on the road. Before I caught time food, everyone's food got took. East London... I got stabbed 11 times recently and... What? What am I meant to do? Stay in my house? Hell yeah! Boy, you better go get put up. How many times has it been? You done got slice seven, 20 times. Man, it's time to give up. Retire. Stay home. Hi. Yeah, move. You are not good at whatever you're doing out there. Give it up. That's all that, you know what I mean? This time, a blade has injured tendons in his left arm and may have severed an artery going into his wrist. He shies away from telling us exactly what happened. So I could, I could, I could make a song. I could, I got stabbed eleven times. I could have, ah, I could have made a song that week, talking the talk, and got millions of views. Michael, that's pretty bad. No, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. I've got a song called "It's Not That Bad." He's now trying to escape a world where violence is glamorized, no longer suggesting it's cool to carry. But the bottom line is there is not one borough on the whole of this map in London that is not affected by youth violence and has not been affected by young people being murdered on the streets. And that's the reality. And, you know, the fact that we're living in a society where this is normal, how is that acceptable? Children being murdered on the street. Rosheen Kevill works what? alongside Martin Griffiths, an outreach worker. She offers the support some families need to prevent young people from turning to violence. If you're big enough to be walking around with a knife and thinking you're bad enough, but the reality is, is these kids don't fully understand, they fully don't comprehend. It don't even be that most of the time, man. People walk around with weapons out of fear. You know what I'm saying? Out of fear. Now, yeah, there's a couple of people that's just doing it like that's overly savage, but a lot of people, like majority, are moving like that out of fear. Because how many of them I do wonder actually intend to murder? Some do, I reckon, because of the level of violence that you know they inflict on their victims. But I don't believe that they set out on that day. Yeah, I'm going to go and murder someone. And a huge concern is revenge attacks. Don't be so naive. And ultimately the aim is to stop those young people getting readmitted back here. Getting readmitted or becoming perpetrators. Because whether they're readmitted, that's another trauma. Or if they become perpetrators, that's an even bigger trauma. Stopping them turning from victims. Into perpetrator. Right. Where they're yeah, she wouldn't. She wouldn't. She wouldn't up in the criminal justice like no offense when i say this like when i see women of this skin complexion and they they, they dating black men which is cool 100 percent, do what you do you know what i'm saying um i don't discriminate as well you know what i'm saying but like you could never understand you know dating a black man is the closest you'll ever get to understanding his world now now if you have black children then you're going to fully understand. You're going to fully understand what, what the, the level. And you have to raise those children with those expectations and that mindset that these things could happen. That's when your world got to really open up. Uh -huh. system where they could end up being, you know, responsible for taking someone's life. I came on duty one day to a 17-year-old in one of our beds who'd murdered one of my clients the night before. Hey. And he got 17 years. He was 17, he looked 15. But I told him when I met him, because I don't know if he was fully responsible for that young person's death. I know now he's been charged and he's doing a life sentence. But I said to him, you don't need- He's not doing a life sentence, he's doing 17 years. He'll be out at 34. Even understand the enormity of what you've done. You cannot fathom it. I said, but if you are not guilty, you're good, innit? But if you are guilty, you better start praying, you better start repenting. You need to do something, because eventually the enormity of what you have done last night is going to take its toll and it's going to weigh you down and it's going to hurt you emotionally and mentally. 
but some seem willing to accept that guilt for the rush of revenge. Hi, it's Will from Booker Law. Dude, swole as hell. Meet Jermaine, a nightclub bouncer who was attacked for refusing entry to one customer. So this guy cut my face because he thought he was disrespected. It's a respect thing. Makes sense. It's like people are fighting for territories, people are fighting for respect. Back in the day, this would be so disrespectful that he cut my face. Back in the day, I'd have to prove a point that I, I'm not, I haven't gone weak. So after getting back, it's pointless. Because we're, we're killing each other. It's black on black. We're just killing each other, and it's pointless. That do be a lot of it. In Chicago, a couple years ago, a bouncer got murdered or unalived uh, for ref so because he refused entry for somebody. On the wind, another emergency. The anguish was overwhelming for Frieda and Peter Muller when they found out their son, Gardy, had been stabbed. The 15-year-old is now recovering. He was attacked on his way home from football training. Let him be alive, God, please let him be alive. That was my concern at that point. Those were my feelings as a mom. What I actually remember is I heard I got stabbed here, as you can see the things there, and I got... Come on, camera! So where he's talking about. Injury stubborn here. And I don't I didn't see him actually aim for there. But I didn't know. And then I remember him stabbed me here. And I tried I think I tried to grab the knife or something and then I was just screaming. And those few minutes of violence are now forcing this family to question everything. So they're saying the best thing to do is to move out of the area. And that's the fear. That's... It shouldn't be like that. It's not new, so you just got to live with it. But for Gardy, there's a realism fueled by social media. Yeah, they better talk to this kid too. Because situations like this, when you minding your own business, walking down the street, coming from doing the right stuff, and you get randomly attacked, this will turn you into, this will turn young men into K-I-L-L-E-R-S's. This will do that. Because he'll go home and be like, bro, I'll never be a victim again. And he'll get right. He'll, he, you know what I'm saying? And he'll, he'll make sure anybody moving funny around him, he'll never lack again. Like, you got to walk, you got to talk him through that, make sure he cool. As a parent, I'd probably move for sure. They're always showing you videos of people getting stabbed. Yeah. Or they're showing you pictures of, uh, like, we caught, like police, they'll say they caught someone with this and then someone that was there at the time took a picture of the actual weapon used and it'll be a knife or a gun and it's, it's like you look at it and you're like well it's london so social media always always like portraying it everywhere we are dealing with a generation that are angry that are disheartened that have been neglected that are let down that no one really cares about that's why Roisin and her colleagues tried to talk to stab victims straight after their surgery to tackle their emotional as well as physical injuries. If you've got a parent who's substance misuse or mental health or just domestic violence, you cannot nurture that child as much as that child really needs nurturing because you're consumed with whatever you're holding as the adult. But does it depress you? Yeah. You know, seeing this all the time. Oh, it breaks my heart. Because you're seeing... It depends if the show is on YouTube or not. Children, you're seeing... But talk to me, like, after this show, talk to me. Families whose lives are destroyed. You know, I had a young person here a couple of weeks ago. His mum found out on Snapchat. She found out on Snapchat that her child had been stabbed. That's... Cool. Now, what does that say about society? After receiving the treatment he needs, Michael discharged himself and is heading home. Are you worried about going back out there onto the streets? I'm not worried. I'm not worried. Nah, because he, he kind of like, this guy, I don't know, he, he gives me a weird vibe. I feel like he'd be putting himself in situations so he can go back and rap about it. You just got to be, I think, more aware and more on point. If you know other people are rolling or carrying things like that, 
Yeah. Then you're going to carry things like that to protect yourself also. And then it sure. becomes... And then it comes a spiral. That effect. Do you carry a knife? I used to. My little brother's been stabbed as well. Which one? Just the, the, the 21 year old? Yeah. Yeah. Did he carry a knife? He recently got arrested for carrying a for knife. For carrying a knife. And is that the problem that a lot of young men have in London? That fear that they're going to be attacked, so they've got to carry. Told you. Yeah. And as a so result, it's a spiral to just go on and on. How many people have probably seen or heard about a friend or something that's happened to them, and they think, oh, I'm, that's not how, I'm going to safeguard myself and I'm going to carry this to protect myself. I don't want that to happen to me. So wait, it's, 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 part of the, it's part of the game, isn't it? That's what I think. What, what, what's the what game? Life? Yeah, it's part of... That's part of life. Part of... Part of being in London, a young man in London? Yeah, maybe part of growing up in London. Gets like that. I think so. I can't sleep well at night because sometimes I'm still up because I'm just like paranoid or it's just like, I think about it and I don't want to sleep. Mm. So, you know, it's, uh, it's one of those things. Back at home, Gardy is experiencing nightmares, flashbacks of the day he was stabbed. It's called PTSD. The streets will give you PTSD. Victimless crimes will give you PTSD. All of, anything can give you PTSD. It ain't just a war thing for the veterans. Salute to the veterans, though, but... These guys, they come up to us and they, like, they said, where are you guys from? And then I just froze, everything just froze. Like, I didn't know what to say. Then my friend off the back and he just said, um, run. I trip over, like, I'm stumbling. I don't even remember him stabbing me here and stuff. And he, that's when he got me here. I was bleeding, I was bleeding. And then, like, so loads of blood pouring out. I was just holding it tight, squeezing yeah. it. I told myself, all I've got to do is keep calm at that time. Like, you don't panic. Because if I panic, then you never know. Because your heart starts racing. And then, like, more blood comes like up. you know, you're just scared. Like, it's more if you panic. I... Yeah, 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 man. If you panic in these situations, you got to think about the, the how the body works. You panic, your blood pressure rises, you got open wounds, psh, psh, even more. You got to... All right now. <laughs> like, if you panic, if I panic, I feel like I would have passed away. If I was like panicking and I didn't know what to do, I would have passed away. But in that situation, I told myself, just keep calm. <laughs> Football eases his mind, helps dispel the memories. And he's good, hoping to turn professional. He's built a life around football, where he lives, and doesn't want to leave because of what happened. But his family's first instinct is to escape. If you're not safe, there's no way you're going to play football. If you're not safe, you're not going to do the GCSE. But there's a tension. Moving away from this part of London, will that give you peace of mind? Probably it will give a little bit peace of mind because... The dilemma of a decent family. That's what I'm saying. This, this, his situation really turned people into kids into savages. Being yeah. driven away by a violence Maybe that's staying no put. Moving. Um, I'm completely against it, to be honest. It's because I have football and I have school. Not where I'm going to put it. I'm just against the fact of moving. It's not so, that they targeted me that. I know, I know. No. It's, it's I know. like, about me yeah. being safe. How do you know it's, that they can target you? Because I'm not involved with anything. I know. Why would they come attack an innocent person? Why? Hey, what are you saying? Are you all right? Yeah, all right. Cool. Six weeks later, Gardy is catching up with Levine Smith, huh? his caseworker from the St. Giles <laughs> Trust. She's been providing. I always feel like when people do that, like when people like harass civilians, they don't really want no smoke with their real ops. That'd be my that'd be my main process in my head. Because if you out on road and you doing this and that, you probably got some real pagans. You probably got some real ops. But you're choosing to mess with civilians. You know these civilians ain't your ops. So coming up to me, asking me where you from, knowing I'm not, you know I'm not, if you gotta ask me where I'm from, you know I'm not your, you, you know I'm not your op. I'm from somewhere that you don't know nothing about, apparently. <laughs> 
So what do I got to do with anything? If you're looking for your ops, go on a block. You know exactly where they be. Not saying that I condone this. All I'm saying to say this is leave the civilians alone. <laughs> They're civilians. Him with mm. added support I was going back to school the recently. moment he was stabbed. They've been supportive and yeah. yeah. They said they were gonna like refer me to a counselor or something like that. And I said I'll think about it. I'll be lying in bed and I just get frustrated sometimes. Of course. And yeah. I'll just be angry sometimes. Yeah, like yeah. why me stuff like that. Why him? Why See? all the other victims of knife crime? So many young lives disrupted. See, BBC don't even know what's really going on. When he laying in that bed, he's really thinking, why me? Why me? Should I really give him a reason? Should I go get spin? Should I get on that? That's what he really thinking. <laughs> At the no point cap. of the blade, Lucas's operation lasted two hours. But it wouldn't go straight through you. Goes through the muscles and into your liver, front and back, right through your liver, and it hits the stomach and goes and, and punches a hole in your stomach. He's done it himself. He's sore and on the mend, but what about his family? All of you have been traumatised by this. Mm. All of you. Even ones who look all right. Yeah. If you look all right, you're probably not all right. Yeah. Okay. okay. So it's going to be a long process. Not six weeks, not six months. It can be years before you're back in a happier place. Being home will help that process, and we catch up with Lucas. Yeah, my house kind of nice. Lucas, a few days after being yeah, discharged. Wow. You're okay now, are you? Yeah, I'm good now. He's now finally able to tell me what happened. And they just started pulling out knives, but I didn't. I'm not gonna run away. What were they after? Well, Lucas. Next time around. Oh, they wanted to push back or something. I don't know, I, I was on the phone, but then I come over because he was trying to, he was trying to stab one of my mates, so just come over and just, he stabbed me. Well, I think it's just the way the, the, the youngsters now think. It's just one of those things, you hear of it happening so often. I can't even lie, Lucas did not run. He didn't, he backed his boy. He paid the cost for it, but you know. It's just, it's just life. It's just something that could happen in, in their lifetime. He top dog at school at that point, you know? If you're walking along the street and you see them, what's gonna happen? Obviously I wanted to go for that. I wanted to feel what I felt, but I wouldn't stab. I don't think, I don't know, Luke. I think Luke is on that now. Edmonton in North Wales. A youth on a moped joins two other men attacking with knives in broad daylight. A young man pinned to the floor. The shouts of onlookers have no effect. They slash and cut with impunity as normal life goes on around. As the attackers escape, one of the weapons clearly visible. Onlookers then try to help. An ambulance eventually arrived and took the victim to hospital. He survives. But this was a warning. They'd have killed him if they felt like it. The attack and everyday reality in many of our cities. Where did society go wrong? A consensus is now developing that tackling knife crime needs a holistic approach that the perpetrators, as well as the victims, must be treated with some degree of understanding. I'm angry, not with these young boys, not with their parents, but with the societies that's failed, not just once or twice, but throughout their entire lives, and allow us to create a situation whereby violence is part and parcel of how they present to me. And they're all victims of violence, they're not perpetrators. Every person I see who's been stabbed or shot has had somebody Yes, it's always the victims that you're going to see. People that are involved are doing the, the, the doing it. They never get, you know what I'm saying? The criminals never get caught. They, you know, can't defend themselves. Use a weapon on them. And they deserve my help. I know it's easy to fall into that sort of abyss of, apathy 
and negativity about the lives of these people, these boys, these things happen to them and them and them and them and them and tolerate it. But no, I know that every single one of these kids doesn't want the life they've got. But when you ask them deep down, they don't want the fear or the anxiety or the stress. But when you understand the rules of the game, you understand what happens. And can you see that it's kind of oozing here? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was about to say, what happened? His whole arm off. Yeah. In the battle against knife crime, teenagers in parts of London now have the option of learning life-saving skills alongside their studies. How long? Until the prime minister. Yeah, I'd say so. Martin's team is trying to raise awareness. It's come to this. Innocence erased at so young an age, but the fake blood may just save real lives and make a young person think twice about carrying a knife. So happens, what happens if you're out? And so you find out someone's carrying a knife, what are you going to do? Tell them, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> I didn't find the humour in it. You can go to the police. Yeah, it's because you're scared. No, but like, like going to the police could be a So what? So you're going to tell me that you that's all good to, it's good to carry? No, no, it's not good at all. But like, um, from the because I come from like, you know, from like some of the people that I know, um, not I know, but I've heard that like, um, these gangs and rivalries that they're in, they think it plays some significance in their life, and they don't really understand the impact um, in the long term that can bring them if they get hurt or are in danger. I don't know, someone like won't like another person and then all of these people that are friends with the people just have a reason not to like another person. Mm -hmm. It just escalates. What do we carry are not evil people? Some of these people don't even know what the beef is. <laughs> they just they just continue on it. They do it for fear, do it for protection, they do it out of peer pressure, they do it to be part of their gang, they do it because that's what everybody else does, because no one else doesn't do it. But knives make you more likely to be violent because it's in your pocket and you can use it. Any big metropolis is burdened by the capacity of a few for violence. That will never go away. But when it comes to rising levels of knife crime, Martin Griffiths argues things can change if society appreciates the true nature of the problem. After three months filming on the front line of this crisis, the complexity of the issue is clear. Less so, perhaps, the solution. Yeah, yeah, there you go. That's a good way to wrap it up. The complexity of it is f severe. I mean, it's clear, but the situation, the, the, the solution is not. So, violence will never be solved. Like gang violence or any type of violence will never be cured. You just got to know how to manage it, man. Tell her, leave a like, comment, I'm gone.